bless you that you are here. We thank you, mighty God, that you are the God who speaks. You are the God who speaks all the time. We bless you. We honor you, mighty God, this evening. You are the God who speaks. We thank you, mighty God, that tonight you are still going to speak. Tonight you have a word in season for us. Tonight we are waiting, mighty God, to hear your word. Release, mighty God, the mysteries of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. You know, every time when I, want to, when I have to come here, I get excited because this is what I've been born to do. Tonight, the heading of our sermon is simple. Second Chronicles 7 verse 14. Hallelujah. I would like us to dissect this scripture to go through it and hear what is it that God is saying about us? What is it that God wants us to know? Because he's a good God. He loves us. Whenever God has something that he needs to release to us, he releases it through his word. Hallelujah. I would like us now to go to Second Chronicles 7 verse 14 and go through it. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I hope you are excited there at home. I hope you are, you are still fasting and praying and seeking the face of God. Remember, if we don't pray, things don't go as they should. Second Chronicles 7 verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin." And heal their land. Hallelujah. I will forgive their sin. Not sins. I will forgive their sin. And heal their land. So we are going to. To go through the scripture. Word by word. Let us hear and understand. What is it that God. Want us to know. By if my people. You know what, what we need to know is that. Without God, man cannot do anything. And without man, God will not do anything. Because God has given us the license here on earth to make things happen. Hallelujah. What happens on earth depends on you. You, Salwani, you child of God. What happens on earth depends on you. So, whenever we stop everything else and seek the face of God through fasting and prayer, guess who's more excited than, than everybody else? God. God is more excited with our fasting and prayer. Why? Because finally, he has, somebody is availing himself or herself to be used by God. So, so whenever we seek the face of God, God gets very much excited. He loves it that finally somebody is making himself or herself available to be the instrument of change in the world or in the earth that God so loves so much. So without prayer, we deny God the opportunity to do what he needs to do. Remember, God keeps his weight. God keeps his weight. He gave us the mandate. Dominion. Genesis 1, 26, 27. God said, let us make men in our know, image. Let them have dominion. I'm, I'm just paraphrasing. Let, let, let them have dominion. Okay. Can we just go to Genesis 1, 1, 1 27 quickly? Genesis 1, 27. You know I love this scripture. My personal conviction is that the whole Bible is to, is to restore Genesis 1, 26 and 1, 27. He said, and then God said, let us make men in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over cattle, over all the earth. So I want you to, to, to underline the word over all the earth, over every creeping thing and on the earth. So God has given us dominion. So if we don't exercise our dominion through God, God can't do anything here on earth. It's one principle that you must know that if you are not praying, if you are not praying, 
you are rendering this world a disservice. That's the reason why the Bible says also in Romans that the, 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 the earth is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. So it is our time for us to manifest. Hallelujah. So let us go to our scripture. Second Chronicles again, 7 verse 14. He said, if, if my people who are called by my name. So I want us to look at the word if. If it talks about the condition. God is saying, if we don't lay the environment. If we don't condition our environment. Where he can act. Nothing will happen. So this word if, it's all about us conditioning the environment where God can act. So you, sh you, you should understand your, 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 your important child of God. God is saying, if, if, he's saying there is a condition that if that condition does not exist, heaven can't manifest here on earth. There is a condition that is solely in the shoulders of the people. Surely in the shoulders of the redeemed. So if the redeemed don't create that environment where God can act, nothing will happen. So in other words, God is saying, if you see wickedness in your street, you do something about it. Pray. You, you will change. If you, see, if you see wickedness in your school, you do something about it. Create a condition where God can act. That is why if, 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 if it's a conditional word, it's saying there are conditions that I'm waiting for. That's God. There are conditions that I'm waiting for from those who look like me, from those who have dominion. Hallelujah. And also, if we look at the word, my people, I'm going to spend more time on this word, my people. Because when the scripture was written, I believe that the word, that's my own personal doctrine. I believe that this whole Bible was written with the new creation in mind. Hallelujah. And that's how it is. So every time you read the Bible, read it with this knowledge that this Bible was written with the new creation in mind. So the Bible said, if my people, meaning there are specific people who have been chosen to create the condition. Remember if. And my people. God did not say if people. If my people. Not if people. So there are others who can pray and nothing will happen. But when God's people pray. Hallelujah. When God's people pray. If his people pray, if his people pray, who are his people? So we need to understand, you know, when, when, wherever you are seated right now, child of God, when you say, I am God's person, you, do you know what you are saying? Do you know what, you, when you say, I am, when God said, if my people, when he say my people, he's saying, if the people who have everything that I have at my disposal can begin to exercise the authority and the power that I gave them. Hmm, hallelujah. These are the special people that God listens to. You know, many people are praying. Many are slaughtering the goats. Many are doing different things. They are going to the rivers. Others are going to the trees. Others are going to the stones. Others are going to different places. But those ones cannot change the environment. Those ones cannot change the situation. There are those that God call my people. There are those that when God looks at them, he said they are my people. Why? Because, because after they are they are redeemed. After they are bought back by the blood of Jesus Christ, they have been restored to the image and likeness of God. Those are God's people. He's saying, it's those ones that are being redeemed, my people, by the blood of Jesus. 
Those are called God's people. So if you go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel 22 verse 30, Ezekiel 22 verse 30, it says, so I sought for a man among them who will make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it and find no one. So let us focus. I sought. I sought for a man. So God is always looking for a man. So before God can do anything, he looks for a man. That's why he's saying, if my people who are called Mm. You are called by my name. What is that name? It is the name of Jesus. If the people who have been given the mandate to use the name of Jesus can come before the throne room of grace, they will be able to change the situation here on earth. You are that person, child of God. Stop undermining yourself, child of God. When God says, if my people, he is referring to you. He knows what's inside of you. He knows what's the person that said. He knows the power that you carry. Stand up, child of God. Stand up. This world is waiting for you. This world is not waiting for a vaccine. This wait is wait. This world is waiting for God's people that he calls my people. Hallelujah. It is, it is us who are spiritually reborn. Hallelujah. Now, I, I, let, let, let me tell you something. You are, you are the perfect person to do what God is expecting you to do this season. Not any other person, but you. You who has been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You will have received salvation. You are the perfect person to walk in the supernatural. You are the perfect person to walk in the miraculous. You are the perfect person to release the heaven here on earth. You see, when God is looking at his people, when he says, if my people, let me tell you one thing. He's referring to us who are saying we are born again. We have received the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. He's saying, if those ones can stand up, I will see change where I need to see change. Hallelujah. He's talking to us. Why? First John 5, 7, it says there are three that agree in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. So the moment God's people stand up, the Holy Spirit become their partner. So when God is saying, if my people, he's looking for those who are ready to partner with the Holy Spirit. He's looking for those who are saying, Holy Spirit, I believe in the one who's saying, if my, because the one who's saying is mine, if my people is the word. So if the word is saying, they are my people, as we partner and release the word of God, we are automatically partnering with the Holy Spirit. We become not only his people, we become in him, being his people. As we are in him and being his people, partnered with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you one thing. Holy Spirit does what God expects him to do, especially where his will is upheld. You are the most powerful being ever. Stop being fearful. You are the ones that God is saying, my people. You are the one. He is referring to you. He's not referring to your pastor. He's not referring to any bishop. He's not referring to any prophet. He's referring to you, child of God. The one who is redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. He's saying, in you, I have invested so much power. You are endured with the power of the Holy Spirit. He is waiting for you. He has become the dormant power because you are waiting for someone. But God is saying, if my people, no one will do what God is waiting to happen. Except for his people. His people. 
So you, 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 you need to put this in, in your mind. That I am God's person. Holy Spirit is always ready to act when you act for God. Imagine. Wow, what a wonderful gift. What a wonderful gift. He is always ready to act when God's people act. When God says, if my people, that word mine, my, I can preach about that my, my, my for the whole year. Because he's speaking about the whole being of God. His attributes. And his arsenal. The angels, the power, the Holy Spirit. When he says, if mine, he's saying, what I have is yours. That's why, it's, that's why he said, my people. Hallelujah. So when you pray in this season of fasting and prayer, I want you to uplift, to raise up your confidence levels to the max. You are not just a normal person. When God says, my people is looking at you, when you pray with that level of faith, when you know that you are working in the miraculous and supernatural because of your alliance with God, his word, and the blood of Jesus, that's why he say my people. Because he say my people because of the covenant. The blood covenant. The blood of Jesus. That's why he say if my people because of the covenant. You know, this scripture was written for the Israelites. God called them his people because of the covenant he entered with them through Abraham and the other one in Mount Sinai and the other covenants. That's why I called them my people. But now we have the covenant through the blood of Jesus. When he says my, you know, understand, understand this word my. When he said my people, he's saying if those who acknowledge the blood, if those who acknowledge the blood of Jesus can turn, things will happen. Hallelujah. Wow. I just want you to say a little, a little prayer. Just say, Father, I'm yours. I, I am yours. Every, everything that you have, everything that you have is mine. I'm acknowledging my position in you. Everything that you have is mine. I'm acknowledging my position. Just, 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 just declare that. Because God is saying, if my people just begin to declare that, Father, I'm yours. I've been doubting myself. I didn't know that I'm this important. I didn't know that you have been waiting for me to change situation and circumstances in my life around me and those around me. Come on, be, be, begin to declare that. He said, if my people who are called by my name. Wow. He didn't just say, he, no, he said, he said, my people, and he said, you are called by his name. Imagine, listen, listen, child of God, when you are praying, you are not praying through your name. When you are praying, you are not praying as Mr. Tusi. You are not praying as Mr. Shulwane. You are not praying, you are praying as being called by the name of God. In other words, he's saying, the license that I've given you to use the name of Jesus, it has become your license. It has become your name. It has become your ability. Whenever you say in the name of Jesus, things have to change because you are called by my name. Mm. Oh, child of God, I I wish you, 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 you can absorb this. That if people who are called by my people are called by my name. You see, he stresses this twice. My people. My name. You know, you are like, 
a double-edged sword. When you go this way, it's my people. When you go this way, it's my name. Anyway, you win. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You know, as you fast, as you are praying, I want your spirit man to rise up. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Rise up and say, I belong to God. My identity is with God and in God. Whenever I open my mouth to pray, I have no doubt because I know that change will take place. Hallelujah. But now, he said, there is a qualifying word. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Yeah. Now we are coming to serious matters. Humbling yourself. The humbling yourself here is not necessarily mean lack of pride, natural pride. God is referring to lack of discernment to his will. Where you feel that you matters more than God's will. Where everything else around you is important than what concerns God. So when you humble yourself in that way, you are saying, Father, I want to lower myself in such a way that my concerns, what matters most for my life, will be filtered through your concerns. What matters through, what matters most for you, God, here on earth. That is being humble. The children of Israel, they burned incense to other gods because they wanted other power because they didn't want to be, they didn't want to subject themselves under the will of God. So their pride was saying, we will do what matters most to us and God will see him later. But he said, if, though, if my people shall humble themselves and pray, they will be able, they, they, they will be able to understand who, who I am in their lives. And when they reach that level, where my concerns become their concerns, they are humbled enough to understand my heart, the heart of God. So it, this is the time that, you know, even though we are saying we have his name, we have my people, but it qualifies. You no, know, the, the, the qualifying word is being humble. I, I want to put it to you that it's time to tell your spirit man that seek the will of God. If the whole church, if the body of Christ can turn and say, today we are seeking the world, the will of God concerning this world. This world can be changed overnight. So now, we are not yet humbled enough. We are seeking our own ways. And our own ways are based on what? Are based on our natural or human feelings. Flesh. That's the reason why many pray through the spirit of offense. Many pray through the spirit of pride. Many pray through the spirit of fear. Why? Because we are not yet humbled enough. The moment you start praying through the will of God, I want to put it to you, child of God, when you say amen, everything around you will be saying amen, meaning let it be so. Everything around you will start agreeing with you. Why? Because they cannot deny the will of the master. If my people can humble themselves 
And do what? And pray. And seek my face. Wow. If I can start talking about the, the, the face of God. The Bible says, God is holy. He cannot look unto sin. On the cross, when Jesus Christ cried, Eli, Eli, Lama, servant, why, why have you forsaken me? When Jesus Christ carried the sins of the whole world, God has to turn his back against him because he can't look at sin. So when we seek the face of God, we are seeking that which God can look at. Holiness. So as you fast and pray, decide that I will live a holy life. I will think holy thoughts. I will release those that I did not forgive. Because they defile you inside. You, you cannot seek the face of God and stand before the face of God while you are still carrying that such type of defilement. Hallelujah. In other ways, you also put away vain things. You cannot be fasting and be indulging in magazines, movies, and all this other stuff. They will defile you. You will end up seeing things that you don't, you're not supposed to see in the spiritual state that you are in. Because let me tell you one thing. When you are fasting, your spirit man becomes so sharpened. And when it's so sharp like that and sensitive, you are gullible to receive anything, be it from the kingdom of darkness or of God. So for you to receive from the kingdom of God, stay away from the things that are in vain. That does not represent the will of God concerning your life. Hallelujah. Seek the face of God. Seek the face of God. In other words, God is saying, use my gifts that have bestowed upon you to seek me. I can, I can say a lot in the face of God. In the face of God, when God looks at a thing, it means that everything is pure. When you seek his face, no sickness or disease can stand the look of God. No problem can stand the look of God. Why? Because his face is in his word. As you dip yourself in his word, you become rooted with his will. And you are right on his face. You know, I love this. To, to Moses, he said, when God, Moses said, I will not go until you show me your glory, he said, I will allow you to see only what? My back. Because lest you see my face and do what? And die. And here he's saying, seek my face. Meaning, Anything that is not worthy to be in the face of God dies. We are not like Moses. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. As we seek his face, when God looks unto you, you will be, you, 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 you'll be looking at Jesus, the blood that is covering you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Are we together? And he said, and turn from their wicked ways. Wicked ways, if you, look, if you read Matthew 25, verse 24 to 26, Jesus gave a parable of a man who went away and gave his servants, and gave his servants talents or money. The other one was given five, the other one was given two, the other one was given one. The one who received five and two the ones who received five and two profited on them. 
they doubled what they received. And the one who received only one buried it. When the master came back, the master called him, oh, you wicked servant. So the wickedness that God is talking about here is not about the, your heart. It's not about the evil deeds. Only. It's about us not, not using what God has given us to save him. That is the wickedness. That we have a talent, but you want to use it to hold the kingdom of God at ransom. You have a gift, you are not using it for the benefit of the kingdom of God. That's the wickedness that God is talking about. God is looking for those who will save him unconditionally. Those who will say, Father, I'm yours. I am yours. We turn from our wicked ways. Because why? With the, wicked, the wickedness that God referred to in the scripture, 2 Corinthians 7, 14, was them saving the foreign gods. So, but when we use the gifts that God has given us to save ourselves, we have become the gods of our gifts. That's wickedness. You are a worshiper, you use your gift to manipulate your church. You are whatsoever person, you use your gift. You, you, you are a giver, you use your giving to manipulate the church because giving is also a grace. There's a gift of giving. You use your gift to manipulate the church. So, so that is the wickedness that God is talking about. I remember I read a story of, of a church in South Korea. They had a conference and there was a man by the name of Stephen. The Holy Spirit convicted him. He began to confess his wickedness. He went to Mr. Lee in front of the church. He said, Mr. Lee, I have I was angry at you. In fact, I've been angry at you a lot. I hated you. So, it came such a way that Holy Spirit was convicting people of their wickedness, including hate, because Mr. Lee was hated for hosting the successful conference. So, when a wickedness is raised up against the gift, or is using the gift, that is where God doesn't want us. The, uh, what I read also said, on that night, Mr. Lee stood up and said to the guy who spoke to him, he said to him, I forgive you. I, I don't have a problem with you. As long as you are repenting, I forgive you. And after that, the whole church begin to repent. They begin to confess their sins and their wickedness to one another. A one-hour service ended up the next morning, five o'clock in the morning. After people have repented from their wickedness, those who were in the worship team confessed. Those who were in different ministries, they all confessed. After when people have confessed and turned away from their wickedness, within that year, 50,000 souls were won by that church. Because the church turned around from their wickedness. So, meaning, the healing that is needed in this world is when the church turned away from their wickedness. The wickedness of the hearts. The wickedness of any form of wickedness. That the reason God said if they tend away from their wickedness, from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. So in other words, wicked acts close the ears of God. Let me repeat it. In the Bible, we see wickedness associated with hearing. 
So wicked acts close the ears of God. You can be fasting and praying. But if you have, if you have been turned from your wicked ways, God cannot hear you. You are as good as somebody who is not, who is not fasting. In fact, you are in a holy diet. You are detoxing. So, sometimes it is good. My spiritual father on the first day of fasting spoke about this. Apostle Amphrenet Pepe, he spoke about this. That we need to check our hearts. The Bible says, I will then hear from heaven and forgive their sin. Not sins. He didn't say their sin. Their sin. There is only one sin that God hates. Rebellion. So anything that you do outside the word of God is an act of rebellion. And it is that sin that God is talking about. So I want us as a church to walk back into the will of God. How do we open the ears of God? Repentance. The Bible said, confess your sins unto one another. When we repent, we are able to go back to if my people who are called by my name we get all the benefits of, the, of being his people and get all the benefits of his name. Let us pray. Father, I thank you. You have spoken to us that you will forgive our sin and heal our land. Mighty God, as we turn as we humble ourselves, turn from our wicked ways, we pray seeking your face. I know that, Father, you are faithful. You are faithful. You are a covenant-keeping God. You are the God who always keep your weight. You always, mighty God, keep your weight. And I know that, Father, as we humble ourselves, repenting, I know that, Father, your ears are attentive to our prayers. And as your ears are attentive to your prayers, we know that, Father, your hand will move. Your hand of healing, your hand of protection, your hand of deliverance will move upon this land and heal this land. I thank you, mighty God, that it is so and it is done. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have been listening to this word, you are saying, God said, if my people who are called by my name, he's referring to those, he's referring to those who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. If you are listening to this word and you know that you don't fall under the category of being God's people, I'm making this call to you. Stand up wherever you are. Lift up your hands. Say, Father, I want, I want to be your people. I want to be your person. I want to be part of your people. Lift up your hand. Pray after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I heard your word. I want to be your person. I want to be called by your name. I repent of all my sins. I renounce and denounce the kingdom of darkness and its works. And I receive you, Lord Jesus Christ, as my personal Lord and Savior. Come to my life. Be the Lord over my life. 
In Jesus' name, amen. If ever you have prayed this prayer, find yourself a Bible-believing church. If you are in Alberton, we are here in 42 St. Columbus Street. If you are around Pretoria, there is Ignite Ministries International and other churches there. Go find yourself a home. You will be called by his name. And you will enjoy the gift of being able to use what God has. God bless you.